Now we have to say uh, good afternoon and welcome uh, to uh, to the bridge to Mr. Carl Howen. Now you will know him from Brushstrokes as the uh, the hero Jacko, and you will also know him from the bizarrely brilliant Mulberry, where he played the eponymous hero in that as well. And if, like me, you you were a big fan in the uh, in the seventies of uh, of some good rock and roll music, uh, then he made his acting his his film debut, I believe, in 1972, 73. In that will be the day he was one of the original Stray Cats. And uh, it is Mr. Carl Hammond. Good afternoon, Carl, and welcome to the show. Oh, how kind! That's absolutely my pleasure. I, it's one of the wonders of uh, of doing this sort of job is you get to speak to your heroes every now and then, and uh, and I have to say I'm look, I'm I'm a big fan. So um, I I love brushstrokes. I loved I've, I've loved all your work, and um, and it's great to be to be able to chat to you. So uh, um, now, of course, at the moment you are starring in probably the uh, probably the most famous play ever written, and that is the Mousetrap. Well, I don't know. It's it's it's. I don't think any of them have been going quite as long, have they? <laughs> Not in one place. <laughs> so. No, I can, listen, listen. You, you've won that argument. You're quite right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the, the um, uh, yeah the 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 play uh, the mousetrap was written in fifty two nineteen fifty two and yeah. uh, it was a present as a radio play to the then Queen Mary and uh, uh, it then went from radio play. They thought they'd do it on stage. Richard Attenborough uh, then played uh, uh, one of the characters and yeah. um, it, they thought he'd only run for about three months and uh, of course 60 years later yeah. years later, it was still on in the West End which yeah. made it the, the longest running play in the history of the English speaking language yeah absolutely and, um, and d- did you actually um, get to play it at the, in, the, in the West End Carl? no, no, no I didn't and um, uh, I, no, and, and, and you know it's like I was, I, I was thinking about this, it's like it's like many things that in in the town you live. Uh, if you know something's permanent, like the Tower of London or or St Paul's, and you know the mouse traps there, because when I'm working there, I'm always walking past uh, St Martin's Lane. I think, oh, the mouse trap. I wonder who's in it at the moment. You think, oh, I'll go and see that. And of yeah. course, you never do because it's on your doorstep, and yeah. you know it's going to be there next year. If I knew it was only had three weeks to run, you you dash along and see it because it's iconic. Yes. Um, and of course, when it when it was offered to me, I thought, well, how wonderful to be in something as iconic as this, and to celebrate the you know the sixty years and sixty years of Queen on the throne, and it all it all became very simpatico. Yeah. And my sixtieth this year, I'm I'm sixty in December, so it all sort of um, ties up. Yes, yeah, that's what we like—a bit of synchronicity. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you enjoy um, your stage work, Carl? I love my stage work. I started on stage first ever professional thing was. Uh, stage play which was for Barry Keith called Only Again uh, in 70 oh I don't remember uh-huh. and uh, 71 so it was before we did That'll Be The Day and uh, uh, or it was just after That'll Be The Day far enough yeah just after yeah. That'll Be The Day and um, then uh, and then from then on I've done so many plays and pantomimes and uh, it, it, it brings you back to your roots and, and the most important thing of course is you get an instant reaction it's, it, it, it sharpens you it sharpens you up you can get a little bit lazy with television because you can have another go you know? yeah yeah. Uh, I, I don't mean that anyone's lazy that does television I mean, no perish the thought because they do work very very hard I absolutely soaps and stuff. my god the schedule is unbelievable yeah. but what I mean is, 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 is to get that reaction from the audience and, and the discipline of turning up at every night and just doing the same thing uh, but it being different because the audience is different is is, is, is different and, uh, and and enjoyable yes yeah I mean the the, the play itself and we, we won't put out any spoilers because it's it's uh, uh, the, the, the play itself has has been running for so long and yet so few people know actually what it's about and and, and how the plot works so and we'd like to keep it that way and keep it fresh for everybody I'll give you a, a rough outline with it help go on then go uh, on then yes basically it's a couple uh, a young couple in the fifth, early 50s have opened a guest house up. yeah uh, in a remote area, which we won't see, just not about 30 miles from London. Yeah. Um, and their first lot of guests start to arrive on the very first opening night. There's a snowstorm, a blizzard, and it becomes, uh, it becomes uh, 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 isolated. Yeah. Snow, they can't get anywhere. And 
once all the guests have arrived, managed to get there, be, they may get snowed in, a murder occurs. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is it's, it's classic Christie who done it. Uh -huh. And that's, that's now how the, how the play unfolds. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very, it's, uh, it's very Christie. Yes. Very Agatha Christie. And the brand, uh, the brand is worldwide now, the Christie brand, of course. Yes. That's because the three things that, that, the, that kept the mousetrap running for 60 years is one is exclusivity, meaning you could only see it, of course, in the West End, so it became a thing to see. Yeah. Um, uh, two, Christie, which I think is Pat Mount, her, she was worldwide with the, the success of Marple and Poirot and her, and her other books, uh, but more importantly, as the television series came along and were so successful and so beautifully played by the lead actors that um, uh, people became the more interesting, you know, more gen new generations of people became fans of Agatha Christie and so they get along to see a stage version and, and there it is and of course the, um, the, th the third thing is this has never been on tour before no. so now we're hitting 60 cities or, t or towns um, in just over a year uh, uh, to celebrate the 60th anniversary so it's it's one a week, so it's quite um, it's quite intense. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Do you enjoy the touring part of it, Carl? Uh, I enjoy I enjoy I enjoy visiting the different towns. Yeah, there's a huge joy in in my 60th year, thinking that I'd done a lot of theatres and realising, in fact, in 50 years or uh, 40 years on stage, I hadn't. Yeah. so many I had, towns I hadn't done. Yeah, and the beautiful theatres that I hadn't done. I played the Hippodrome. I played the Alexandra. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Hippodrome being more modern, and Alexandra, I'd go over there for a drink or see some people I knew there, but yeah. I'd never played it, so it's going to be a joy coming to play the Alex. Yes, yeah. And uh, and and other towns. I mean, to play uh, Glasgow, I'd never played Glasgow and played the Opera House in Glasgow, which is a barn of a place. Yeah. I don't mean that in a derogatory fashion. I mean that in it's massive. Yes. And uh, and we packed it. They opened the Gods for the first time, which is in a long time, which was absolutely. Amazing, you know, yeah. to have the house full sign at the Opera House in Belfast outside was was a joy. Some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful theatres we've got in this country, and so and it's ex exciting getting the acoustics each week different uh, is different in each theatre. Yeah, uh, and the response, and it's amazing. Some some people you, you, you get a, re uh, a response to a line in Plymouth, and that that you don't get somewhere else and then suddenly an audience in Cardiff will pick up on it yeah. and you think my god why did why did Plymouth pick up on it and Cardiff pick up on it and, uh, so the, it is fascinating yeah yeah but it keeps it fresh of course as of well of course it does yeah. it, 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 people say how do you do the same thing every night well of course you're not doing the same thing because the audience is different and they yeah. become as one they become as one animal yes and uh, it's, it, it really is exciting now the travelling and staying in hotels isn't that but visiting the different places it is yes yeah so i mean you've got uh, you've got a year of, of of touring so when does all that finish for you carl it finishes uh this finishes for me uh on the i come home from dublin on the first of july right and then i go with my grandchildren when they break up and my wife to Portugal for the summer holidays. Lovely. Uh, uh, which I'm really looking at, which I, is a perennial thing. Yeah. They've been born and I thoroughly enjoy. Yeah. And then when we come back, um, there's still another leg to go, but the decision on whether we do the last leg is yet to be made or right. yet to be asked. You know, so. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, you remain busy uh, with all... I was fascinated to uh, uh, to read that you've also... Um, you've done an audio book about uh, Keith Moon. Yes, well, I did... As yeah, you of were, course. Yeah, you alluded to it the, in, in the introduction. I worked with Keith, and that will be the day in Stardust. Yeah, and we became um, we became good friends. And um, when this book was his autobiography was written, this biography by uh, Dougal Butler, yeah. who was his uh, Batman valet, as it were, a yeah. uh, roadie, um, but closer than a roadie, as it were, because they shared um, everything together. They were great. Right. They were very good friends, and and he subsequently became a very good friend of mine. Um, when he asked me to do the audio book, I was really, really um, proud and, um, and flattered. So yeah. I did that. Uh, and, but I've got to tell you a funny thing about that. Is, is I'm doing the audio book, and uh, you're doing different, as, as I can, but maybe uh, not very well, but I do my best at doing different accents. <laughs> people that keep me. Yeah. 
And uh, there you go. <laughs> then I'm doing... I actually base, because it's written by Dougal, I base my voice on Dougal. Yeah. Right, so it made it easier because he was narrating most of the time. Right. So I do this and it's working very well. Until the, <laughs> the page where... And then Keith meets Carl Howman. <laughs> well, of course, now I've got to invent a different voice for me because <laughs> so, so my voice is Dougal, and then I have to invent a different one for myself, which is so the point at this point became a bit ludicrous. Yeah, yeah. But, but when we worked our way around it, so schizophrenia was in the offing, was it? It was a little bit, and I hadn't, I hadn't foreseen this at all. But right. there you go. Oh uh, well, I mean, it's, I mean, I mean, fascinating character, and um, and uh, you know, to have uh, to have shared um, some experiences with somebody like Keith Moon along the way. It's, I mean, you've you've had a um, a, a, a really interesting uh, working life, haven't you, uh, Carl? You, I mean, you've you've been involved in in stage, uh, in th- uh, obviously on the th- in the theatre. You've been involved in television, hit television shows. Um, you've been involved in the in the movies as well. Um, is is the one particular aspect of acting? Well, radio. I did eleven years with. Uh, That's right, of course, radio. yes. Yeah. Uh, which is your your medium? Which yeah. And I thoroughly enjoyed that, and and, and coming alive. So. Uh, yeah. Nice, uh, eleven series of King Street Junior and two of Coming Alive. So, the we we branched in, and that was a that's another discipline entirely. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, have you got a preference, or is it just you know? Do you t- do you take it as it comes? I, I generally took it as, a, as, as it came, and 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 each one d- d- requires a uh, a slight different uh, discipline, yeah. um, and um, the variety is, uh, as they say, the cliche spice of life. Yeah. And, uh, that's what keeps you going, and it's lovely to, 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 to hear audiences on stage. You know that is that's after all that's the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. Well, long may you continue to entertain us, Carl, and thank you very much for uh, for all the work you've uh, you've done that we've appreciated over the years, and um, we uh, we look forward to welcoming you up uh, up in Birmingham, uh, for with uh, up here at the Alex, and um, and look for and hopefully um, you'll have a great run and then uh, enjoy yourself in Portugal. You're you're an absolute star. Thank you so much. Yeah, so it's absolutely and, uh, our pleasure. Good luck to. Oh, thank you so much, Carl. And thanks for talking to us this afternoon. Many thanks. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.